All right, and we are recording. So welcome to the launch of Galileo Open Learning Materials. Um, we've been working on this for quite a long time, and we're very happy to make it official today. And we will be hosting another launch event for those people who can't make it later on uh, if any of your colleagues weren't able to make it today. So first of all, if you want to know about our new repository, you should probably know about what Affordable Learning Georgia is. And for many of you, this is a review. Um, we are a University System of Georgia initiative out of Galileo, which is Georgia's virtual library. Um, we are providing affordable textbook alternatives uh, to promote student success, retention, progression, graduation. Um, we're definitely an organization, but we're also trying to be a one-stop service to help everyone find these resources, especially open educational resources, um, free resources, electronic resources, and lower cost. And you can always check out our main website at affordablelearninggeorgia.org. And so in the repository, you need to know a bit about textbook transformation grants. Um, these are our grants that support the time that faculty and staff need in order to transform a course from using a, an expensive commercial textbook to using either pre-existing or newly created OER or other affordable resources. Um, this includes a complete redesign of a curriculum, a redesign of the syllabus, redesign of lecture slides and tests and quizzes and many things that go into bringing new resources into your course. And of course, this also allows faculty to bring team members into this redesign, including instructional designers, uh, librarians who are great at helping find and evaluate OER, uh, student assistants if there is a lot of work that needs to get done, if you're creating resources, and of course other subject matter experts or other experts such as graphic designers on your team uh, as you see fit. Of course it's all based on these proposals and it's a very competitive round of grants every time. And as part of these grants, any of these materials need to be shared. And this has been kind of an issue in the past because we've had many ancillary materials and uh, these different documents that are coming out of it and would be very helpful but the only place that we were able to really share them was our website and to really do open access and open license hosting that's not enough so we didn't quite have this structure in place when we first got started we were focusing on the adoption of pre-existing resources but even then resources were going to be created so there are many different ways uh, that people went about making these resources available to the public uh, some people have an institutional repository, and that's wonderful if you do. Um, for example, here is Velocity State University's VTech stuff on the top left. Um, this will allow you to keep all of your files from your institution in one place that's aimed at both preservation and discoverability, and repositories are a great thing. That is why we're pursuing one. Um, there were other methods, of course, because not every institution in the USG has a repository. Uh, for example, the mostly K-12 directed uh, curriculum was used to host the Instructor's Guide to OpenStax Concepts of Biology by uh, Molly Smith and Sarah Selby were at South Georgia State College, and at South Georgia State College there wasn't a repository for them ready to go. We can host all of these things on our site, as you can see in this little table below, uh, but they all have to be separate and they all have to be one link, and if we put too many links in one place, then we wind up with a really unreadable set of tables. There's OpenStax CNX. Um, they often require you to work with them in uploading materials, and they're moving more towards it being not as uh, collaborative when it comes to submitting materials. Uh, CNX was an older program that has been kind of tough for OpenStax to update. So that kind of became less of an option. Then there's Merlot, which allows you to do things through Cool for Ed, uh, which is their uh, 
basically their website set up where you can make a profile um, of an instructor and their course. And you could, in there, share some files so long as they were under a certain size limit. And they were, it was a pretty small size limit, but it was at least something free and available to the public to use. But all of these have their own different compromises, and it did not really, uh, it, just, it just wasn't as nice for our teams in order to share things, to just have one place and to have some support behind it for this hosting. So that's the initial um, reason why Galileo Open Materials was started. Now we have a digital repository that is focusing on sharing these resources which are created by USG faculty. And that includes also the University of North Georgia Press and other partner materials that we'll be adding um, later on. And the repository site is oer.galileo.usg.edu, and I will type that into chat for you. That is a link to the repository, and we are going to go there through screen sharing very shortly. In our collection so far, we have 22 open textbooks. We have 51 grants collections, which I will explain what those are uh, shortly. And then 26 uh, either ancillary materials or sets of ancillary materials. ALG grants collections, unlike what you might have known about open textbooks and ancillary materials, these are somewhat in between. Every single grant team had to create a very big proposal that included uh, different quantitative and qualitative measures they were going to take along with the outcomes that they were seeking. Um, once their grant project was done, they release a final report which has all of the research that was done throughout all the project and all of the narrative uh, elements of it, such as the lessons learned, what they experienced, how it changed their teaching. Um, if you could put all of these things together with a syllabus that was linked to the materials, especially by how they have planned out the course throughout the semester, this could make the adoption of open materials that a grant team had already done much easier for somebody else. Now this isn't quite sharing a D2L course or something like that, but it's also very platform agnostic. If you're not using D2L, you can still use these uh, grants collections to advise how you might structure a free and open course. And I'll show you these once we get there. And I do not want to focus too much on PowerPoint slides today, so I'm going to move right to the repository. So I'm going to share Google Chrome. All right, so you should be seeing um, the main page for Galileo Open Learning Materials. I've still got chat open just in case you uh, have any questions, feel free to send them there. And you'll see that there's a few options at the beginning of the home page. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take a look at the left side of the page because there are many different ways to browse these materials and they're done by um, different types of data that we have about each material that we add. Oh, we have a question from Daniel Haynes. It says, do you have to have an IP in Georgia to access it? Absolutely not. And this is one of the big differences between a full open access repository and just a USG one. Um, in the past, you may have had a shared server uh, in order to share materials with only USG faculty and staff. This isn't the case here. You could pull out your phone in the middle of a Starbucks and you could access Galileo Open Learning Materials just fine. Yes, and other states will be able to use these sources. Um, so uh, this will be actually internationally used. It's open access and that allows the impact of these materials to not only help the state as much as possible, but also help out others just by virtue of making these available. 
and I'll show you a little bit about that. And of course, if you have any questions on what open resources are, how to find them, um, affordablelearninggeorgia.org has quite a few tutorials on that, especially in the help section. So if you're not up to speed on what open means and uh, what OER uh, have been doing throughout ALG's uh, history since 2014, um, feel free to check out the site because that has quite a bit of material on that. So let's look over here. Um, first of all, you can just go to the home page from wherever you are and you can click on home. Um, there's a small about page and a small FAQ. These will probably be expanding as we get actual questions about the uh, repository. Right now, I just kind of have to anticipate a couple of questions and answer them myself. Um, you can also create an account on here if you want to set up things like search alerts. So under Browse, I'll just click by subject. And in here is a list of all the subjects. Um, these are based on the USG Regents Academic Committees, uh, Academic Advisory Committees, and their configuration. So we will be adding the uh, more subjects as they are requested or as they appear, uh, but these are the ones that we have something for at the moment. So for example, if I wanted to look at mathematics, I could just click on mathematics and get the three options that I have available. I'm going to click back for a second here because I could also click the plus button and I would see exactly what's available from here. Um, that's important because not every single subject has ancillary materials, grants collections, and open textbooks right from the beginning. So let's check out um, a set of ancillary materials. We'll do mathematics. So in here we have stuff by year. Um, these are just lists of ancillary materials and some of these are links and some of these are files. Because ancillary materials is the collection, we usually put the format on the ends of the titles so that when you're seeing it in this list, you know exactly what it is. So a lot of these are open courses. These are done through websites and you can't, you can't really put together these websites in a way that are downloadable. So those are linked out. But when you have something like lecture slides or um, completely different files like latex coded files, uh, that's when you would have a file to download. And then, of course, if you have PDFs, it's even easier. But let's click on this. So this is not an open textbook. This is something that would support an open textbook. Uh, specifically, Apex Calculus 3.0, which we've linked in the abstract for this uh, particular ancillary material. Uh, Dr. Sean Alt from Valdosta State University had coded these himself, and they are meant to be used in the open source mathematics platform WebWork for homework. So you're able to download these from here. Uh, you're able to look at what the WebWork platform is by clicking on that link. And we've, you can see over here that we've included it in Mathematics Commons. And I'll show you a little bit more about what this Commons thing is um, near the end of the presentation. But also down here, you'll see a Creative Commons license. Creative Commons licenses are um, legal licenses that allow permissions beyond what you usually have when you create a file, your, your initial copyright. So with this Creative Commons license, what we're saying is that you can remix this file, you can download it, you can keep it, uh, there's never going to be an expiring license on it, and you can do nearly anything with it so long as you attribute the original work, that's the attribution part, and so long as you share your work under the same license, that's the share-alike part. And if you want to know more about this, you can click on that and it'll bring you to the Creative Commons page for this license and it'll tell you exactly what you're free to do. It'll ask for a donation. Um, that was interesting. And it'll describe the different terms. Yeah, and you can even click on the license itself and there's the entire legal code for it. 
So that's really nice because Creative Commons is native to this repository. So you'll know as soon as you get to a files page exactly what you can do with this file. Now there are a couple of files in here that do not have Creative Commons licenses on them. It's because when we first started textbook transformation grants, not everything had a requirement of an open license. It had a heavy preference for it. Um, okay, so if, okay, I've got a question about trying a chemistry uh, section and not being able to uh, access a textbook in there. That is because right now, um, all we have in here is the Wikitext, which is Survey of Chemistry 3. Ah, oh, okay. That is a broken link. Okay, I will fix that. Thank you, Barry. I will, uh, <laughs> I will be in touch with you because I'm going to have to change a link in there. Go figure. That's something that definitely happens at a launch. Um, so let's say that you wanted to check out um, what open textbooks we had overall. You could just click on all USG open textbooks. And within here, these are all the ones that were either created under a grant project or funded by us and published by the University of North Georgia Press. So for example, here's the Compact Anthology of World Literature. This was done through the UNG Press. Not only do we have the full text of it available to download, but we have it downloadable in parts, just in case you wanted to download one volume only, especially because of the large file size. If the authors provide a description, we will have the description here, and we'll either say author's description or editor's description. And in open textbooks, we also mention the title of the course it's for. So this is World Literature 1. The course number, which can be the same throughout the USG, and it could not be the same. There are many non-standard course numbers out there, so going by course title tends to work a little bit better. You can see we've got the Creative Commons license listed. This particular book has an ISBN because it's published by the University of North Georgia Press, so we have that. Uh, when it was published, uh, some keywords that make it searchable. We'll go through search a little bit later. And that's about it. You can download any of these right here. And because this has a print version available, we have a link for you to buy the print version of this textbook. Okay, so that was our open textbooks and our ancillaries. The other part of it are our grants collections. And these are very unique to Galileo Open Learning Materials. You won't see the term grants collection out there too much uh, elsewhere because our grant program is very unique and the collection of documents we think is very helpful if we put them all together. So for example, let's go to one that, aha, here we go. So this is Introduction to Environmental Science, the grants collection. Um, there were six people on the team. They are all listed as co-authors. You can see that it uses an open textbook um, that was created for this particular course. So we link it here, and it's one of our own, so I could just open this in a new tab. And here is the open textbook, Introduction to Environmental Science. Along with that, um, we have a link to the round of grants in case you wanted to see the listing of exactly who was in it at the time. And we describe what the grants collection is. It's basically a blueprint to kind of recreate what these uh, what these teams had done, along with knowing their what their research was, how it turned out, and what lessons they learned. So I could download the entire full text. I could just download it in parts: the syllabus, the proposal, the final report. And we've made this entire document available in a Word format because all of these are Creative Commons attribution license. So that means that you can remix these and make them your own so long as you attribute the original work. That's a lot easier to do in Word than it is in Adobe uh, Acrobat uh, through a PDF. So while PDFs are way easier to read, uh, for example, if you have it on a phone or a tablet, um, the Word version allows you to make new versions of it, and you could convert those into a PDF if you wanted to at that point. 
Let's take a look at just this one, and we'll view the whole thing. Um, the repository immediately puts a, a, a pre-cover page on it, but we have our own customized cover page for every single um, open textbook or grants collection that was made under Textbook Transformation Grants. This was done by our site's designer, Jason Steele. I think he did a wonderful job on this. We have an explanation of what the grants collections are, just in case someone stumbles upon them. And then each one is listed um, by a section header. And then we have the syllabus, which this one is an entire syllabus. Sometimes they just have the course structure itself. But here is the entire structure uh, with links to particular texts. And uh, some of them are free resources. Some of them are open. Some of them have different licenses on them. And they are marked at that point. After that, you have the proposal. So here's exactly what they set out to do. And I'll scroll through this pretty quickly because I don't want to dwell on it for too long. But this had the entire proposal. And here is the final report, which will basically describe how that proposal turned out throughout the entire process. And here is their, their work and how it, went, how it went through, because they created an entirely new textbook and enhanced it. Um, then there are student quotes. And then there are quantitative and qualitative measures, including uh, drop fail withdraw rates on this one, which was a slightly uh, negative change in this particular instance. And then they have way different metrics, which are really cool. And it depends on the uh, grant team, but you can get so many different types of measures on this particular implementation which can guide you into either choosing to use these resources or not, or they can guide you to make uh, different changes based on that. So that's what the grants collections are all about. Uh, you can also browse by author. So I could go in here and let's say that I wanted to look up the main author for uh, that particular textbook. It's under Z, Carolyn Zander. And I would pull up both um, the grants collection and the open textbook. And I can download them right from there. You can also browse by institution. So if you wanted to see what your particular institution has produced so far, uh, you could go to any of these. So I'll go to Middle Georgia State. And you can see that there's the wiki textbooks here, the lecture slides. Um, there wasn't, if there's at least one author on a collaboratively written textbook, your institution will show up um, in here too. So Writing the Nation and Understanding Music both had a UN, uh, had both uh, an MGA uh, faculty member on them. And you can do it by Creative Commons license. This may not be so helpful if you're looking for stuff within your subject, but if you really want to find the most remixable stuff, you can find stuff with an attribution license. Um, if you wanted to find only things that were non-commercial, you could do it this way. And because we have that data there, it, it was nice to just throw that browsing feature right in. Uh, when it comes to course numbers and course names, it's really hard to list all of these in a browse uh, window. But what you can do is search for a particular course number. So if I want ENGL 1102, I can search for it this way, and everything that lists English 1102 uh, will pop up. And English Composition 1, this particular thing went into both English 1101 and 1102. Uh, the writing handbook, I think, did the same exact thing. And so here's the publication year. You can look at the keywords, um, the disciplines that are involved. And you could do the same, like let's say that your calculus course has a particular number. And as I've learned, just about every calculus course throughout the USG has a different number to it. If I do calculus I, for one, I'll find 
many different calculus things, including calculus one grants collections and ancillary materials. Uh, I could go down here and find the publication type. All right, so book or series. But if I wanted a PDF, I can get just the ones that are PDFs. I could even save the search so that if anything new got added to uh, the repository that would turn up in Calculus 1, you could get that email to you. And that is a My Account feature. Of course, if you see My Account, you're just seeing a whole bunch of stuff about administrative stuff. Um, other than that, uh, there's just some more links to the frequently asked questions, the about. You can do an advanced search. Um, there aren't too many features that are part of that advanced search outside of what you can do here. Um, I would usually just recommend doing a basic search in the repository. Uh, the contact administrator email goes to affordablelearninggeorgia at usg.edu. At the moment, that only goes to me, so I will see it and uh, get back to you with a question, or if you want to add something, you can totally email me there. And, of course, there's links to Galileo and to Affordable Learning Georgia right on the site. And here are all the browse alls, so you can go to all the open textbooks, all the grants collections, and all of the ancillary materials. Down here you can see that there, are, there have already been 874 downloads of these materials in the past year. That's because when we first got this started, and we had it in alpha and then had it in beta, it was already part of the Digital Commons network. We assign different Digital Commons disciplines to each item that we add, and that is shared with all of the Digital Commons repositories out there. So, if I wanted to find uh, everything in Digital Commons that was about international law, I could just click on this, and I'd find it all here in the International Law Commons. And a lot of people use this to find open access and open educational resources. So um, you'll see that quite a few of these were downloaded from the United States, but there are even ones that go far outside of the United States, if I can get to one. There's one from Amsterdam. Quite a few downloads from Illinois. Quite a few downloads of Successful College Composition, which is a, an English resource. There's one from Stockholm, Sweden. And yeah, these are done by just basic analytics. And we will have ways of tracking our downloads moving forward, and it'll, I, I think that, um, the official launch will definitely bring even more people to the site and using these materials. There are a couple of things that um, the repository uh, engine kind of includes, including the top 10 downloads of all time and the 20 most recent editions. There's a featured resource that changes every day. We're hoping to integrate this into the Affordable Learning Georgia site. We used to have a featured textbook that would go every month. Hopefully, we'll have a featured resource that can update on its own, and you'll get more of a variety every time you visit the ALG site. All right, so I'm going to move back to the slides. So not only is this a good self-contained repository, but there are quite a few search engine optimization features in the repository that allow these to be discoverable through Google very quickly. Um, I searched for just successful college composition. There are 594,000 results that Google turned up, but the first one was our textbook in the repository. Then it was the PDF in the repository. Then it was the PDF on the ALG site. So this has even better um, priority on Google than our own site. And then past that point, there was the Merlot entry in it. So we, we are quite findable on Google whenever you add anything to the repository. And we have a lot more to come. So right now, we have about 100 resources in there. That is going to obviously increase as we go along. So grant projects are going to continue to finish. Um, there have only been 
a couple of round four ones that have finished and a couple of round three ones. As those start coming in, there will be more materials, more grants collections, and uh, more open textbooks to explore. Uh, UNG Press is currently working on some more textbooks that will help out with both ECOR and with ALG, and those will be added to the repository too. We're hoping to integrate the repository a lot more with the ALG website moving forward. Uh, that'll take some design work, but I think that'll uh, be pretty good. Um, we'll be using some partner materials from ECOR in the repository and partner materials from OpenStax. Uh, they are also collecting community ancillary resources for their textbooks, so uh, we can probably work together uh, with that in some interesting ways as that moves forward. Uh, we'll be looking at getting all of our data harvested into Merlot so people can discover all of these files within Merlot. Um, and the same exact thing for the Georgia Knowledge Repository, or the GKR, which is Georgia's um, kind of united digital repositories throughout the USG and including some partners. Uh, Emory just got added to the GKR, for instance. Okay, so that is a first look at Galileo Open Learning Materials. I didn't want to make it too long because I wanted to make sure that if anyone has any questions that we could uh, answer those. So if you can unmute, then uh, feel free to do so and you can answer uh, through voice or you could type it right into chat and I will relay it from here. Okay, I am so far not seeing many questions. Oh, wait, here we go. I uh, got one from Susanna Smith. Will this only be for materials that have received a grant? Or will you accept other materials created without a grant? That's a good question. Um, at first, we added everything that was grant funded and we added um, some of our UNG partner materials. But moving forward, if anyone wants to add other resources, they can just email me by clicking on contact administrator right on that site, or they can email me uh, using my email address, jeff.galan at usg.edu. We're hoping that as this moves along, um, we'll have a more formalized collection policy when it comes to materials outside of the normal ALG environment. But yeah, th those are absolutely welcome. Uh, the vision for all of this is for Galileo to host any um, learning materials that have been created under their funding, which is part of Affordable Learning Georgia. Um, so Galileo and ALG are paying for the subscription uh, to BPress, and BPress provides the support with the repository. I do all of the metadata work. And when it comes to editing and controlling the site, at the moment, we only have me. Um, we have a small amount of staff in the Galileo offices, and I am currently the repository administrator. So when it comes to the criteria for submitting materials, for now, it's mostly materials that are done through particular programs, ALG. Um, if you want to submit other materials, just feel free to let me know, and that will be uh, and we can work it out from there. Um, right now, there is not, like for instance, a pre-production peer review system for every single thing that's going to be added. And that's pretty par for the course when it comes to repositories, unless you have uh, a peer-edited journal or something like that. Uh, there is room for peer review, I think, in the future, but that is something that would have to be planned out for a very long time. Uh, so yeah, that, I hope that answers your question there. Um, I hear, I'll email you with other questions, with a grin. That's fine. Um, I welcome and enjoy as many questions as possible.
All right, so one thing I'm going to do before we go is type in the site address again so that you've got it right in front of you before you leave. The other thing I'm going to do is direct you to a form. So um, this is a form that we use for every single one of our online events. And this would be very helpful for us in order to um, determine what needs to change, what we can do better um, as we do any type of ALG uh, training and development activities. And I am about to do that. There we go. So that should link you to the form itself. And if it does not, then, aha, all right, I will link you to it um, through my uh, through my Google Drive instead. So share the link. All right. There we are, okay. I'm getting a better link for you. Shorten this URL. And here we go. There we go. I updated the uh, URL shortener, so that should work. And thank you all for attending today. Uh -huh. And yes, Barry, I will get back to you on that. Uh, that is just a quick uh, URL switch for that one item. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Oh yeah, it worked this time. Yep, that's, <laughs> I had to fix the URL shortener on that one. Thank you all for attending.